Welcome my live learners, super sentence stackers. I am zinging. We are going to be a big community of writers and you're going to impress me with the magic that comes out of your pencil and your pen. Now, Words are busy little guys and they are going to be buzzing around our brains but we're going to catch these buzzy words and we are going to make some smooth, sweet, delicious, honey-like writing. I am so pleased to be here and I cannot wait to meet you when I read your work. Okay everybody, is your teacher smiling? I hope so. Are you smiling? Ding! I hope so. Are we ready to write? 
Well, my name is Mrs C, this is me, and I'm going to hold your writing hand today. I'm going to help you ever such a lot. And no one's going to be worried, no one's going to be nervous. We're going to be try our best writers. We might be a little bit slower than normal, but we are going to do our absolute best. And we are beaming, currently making an enormous 20, 20, 200 plus strong classroom, which is stunning. Now, every day, what am I going to do? Your teacher's going to hand in some work that has impressed them, and they will send me three pieces every day. They'll be good, clear photographs, and they'll hashtag them with hashtag Mrs. C to make sure I get it. Then I will celebrate some for tomorrow. So Wednesday, you might see your name up in lights. And the other thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a global super sentence stack from my favourite pieces of writing. Now, before we get started, what happened yesterday? Well, it went a bit puppy power crazy, didn't it? It went a bit uh, Scooby-Doo. There were dogs, there were puppies. Some of you dressed up. But let's take a little look at Daisy. Oh, Miss Gambon from Redgate. Look at Daisy's face. Hmm. Does Daisy like the carrot? I'm not sure. Oh, look at this. Look at Dewey. Oh, Dewey, you're gorgeous from Wolford uh, Nursery and Primary School. Thank you, Dewey, uh, for coming in and meeting everybody. Now, you had a great day yesterday. We're going to have a great day today. I'm going to choose all of our ideas to really sharpen our thinking. Now, first things first. We're going to move along a big shape for writing and we're going to work with a narrative map. And who is our central character? Well, it's Winston, but we've got to be really careful as the author today because we don't want to tell the reader too soon what the dog's name is because in the beginning of the story, the dog is unnamed. Now, we are going to write a third person narrative and that's really important that we use the pronouns he because Winston is a boy. So we're going to be using the pronoun he and when the time is right, we're going to introduce his name. But we're not going to use his name today. Are you ready? I'm going to reveal the first plot point in the story. This is a slow reveal and we're going to show one plot point at a time. time. Today's, Today's plot point is this, this little, little moment here. here. And, and look, look closely, closely please. please. We have the poor, lonely dog on his own on the street. And our writing has to do certain things. Right at the beginning, we've got to create some negative atmospheres and we're going to build sad face writing. But as the story moves on, we get little glimmers of po positivity and then we go up to sort of one smiley face plus three writing. But I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you with how we create these effects. Now, what do I need you to do? Well, I need to make sure that you've got a pencil or a pen. This is the most important part of today. I want to make sure you've got a switched on excited mind, and that's important as well. Um, I'm going to be moving very quickly today. I'm going to be moving quickly, talking about timers, and I'm going to ask you to do certain things with your friends that I want you to when I want you to talk to them. Uh, then there are certain things I want you to do with your teacher. And the most important thing we're going to be doing today is thinking about words. Now, to get the writing going, we are going to choose three crucial aspects from the writing rainbow. And this is how 
we're going to shape up our thinking and we're going to think really hard about these three key areas. So what are our steps to success for today? Number one, I'm going to ask you to think very closely about how adverbs. And we're going to think about those in two ways. We're going to think of how adverbs that end in ly. And we're also going to think about um, adding in some wheres. Okay, and sometimes we might build those into clauses, depending where our writing ideas take us. The second thing I'm going to ask you to do today is to think about the sounds of words, particularly at the beginnings of the words. Now, they might have the same letter, but they might not. It's all about the sound, and we're going to be zooming into alliteration. And when we're on the third chunk, we're going to be working with dialogue and we're going to be very chatty and informal and actually really important for writing we're going to be believable right so first things first your book i hope you've got your book and your book will be organized into thinking side and writing side and on this side we're going to have lots of jottings and words and on this side, we're going to put our sentences. So, I am now going to tell you how your chunks are going to work. On the thinking side, I want you now with me to divide learning chunk one on the thinking side into four parts. So pick up your pencil or your pen and divide it like this two lines going down and a line here. So you create four spaces. Why do we need four spaces? Because we are going to gather words and phrases in four departments, four little departments. And the first thing we're going to do is think about words that we can put in this section. So. I want us now to watch plot point one. It's not on for long. And in fact, I'm gonna ask you to watch it twice. But as you watch it now, I want you to look really closely. I want you to look really closely at the poor puppy. I want you to look really closely and look around in the environment about what you can see. It's not on for long, it's about 29 seconds, watching closely. Okay, we're going to watch that again in a minute and we're going to watch for a different reason. I want us now to think really hard about words as we watch again that could end with L-Y. The sort of thing I'm thinking is, hmm, dejectedly. Let's watch again now. No talking. This is your watching and your hard thinking. Off you go. We're now going to play Word Collector. Word Collector is where you listen and remember 
six of Mrs C's L-Y ending adverbs. They are all about feelings and they are all negative. I want you to show me using your fingers and counting how many you've caught and how many you can remember. Are you ready? Dejectedly, hopelessly, miserably, glumly, tragically, somberly. What I want you to do now for me on your thinking side, in your first chunk that you've made, I want you now to chat and jot. And I'm going to give you the challenge of writing down eight adverbs ending in L-Y and I'm going to give you exactly 40 seconds to do that. Off you go. Well done, everybody. Oh, I wonder who has got eight words. Right, what I'd like you to do now is I want you in your classrooms to do some kind calling out. Your teacher is going to have a pen in their hand and they are going to gather your ideas. You have two jobs in kind calling out. You have to suggest loudly your ideas to your teacher. You don't have to put your hands up, but you are going to be polite. And the other thing you're going to do, and it's a bit like bingo, you're going to tick off words that you already have. So if somebody says dejectedly and you think, I have that, you can tick it off. If you haven't got it, you need to write the word down. I'm going to give your teacher one minute now to do kind calling out to have a community space with your words in your room. Off you go. Okay, I'm going to read my L-Y words now and you can add them to your list if you want to. Dispiritedly, desperately, despondently, apprehensively, gingerly. What we're going to do now is think about adverbs that are phrases that are slightly different. OK, they're not L-Y and they've got two nouns in them. And I want to see how you get on with this. Um, I'm going to see if you can do this straight away into chotting. This is the sort of thing I mean. Uh, it's how something is happening, but it's not an L-Y word. Look at this idea. 
face to the flagstone. That's me imagining the little puppy's face on the cold pavement. Face to the flagstone. I want you to choose one or more, it's up to you. And I'm gonna give you four choices. You could choose, you could write these down now if you want. Paw, claw, nose, fur. Could you follow the pattern? Could you do paw to the, hmm, I wonder what it could be. I know some of you have got some ideas. I'm going to give you 30 seconds with your friends. Can you follow the pattern of face to the flagstone? Off you go. Oh, some really good ideas there. Okay, your teacher is now going to do 20 seconds kind calling out. And they're going to gather your ideas following the pattern. Face to the flagstone. You might have chosen paw. You might have chosen claw. You might have chosen fur. Off you go. Oh, these are my ideas. I got claw to the concrete. You can borrow that if you want to. I also got paw to the pavement and I saw lots of you getting that idea. That was really good. I want to get some words here to set the scene. And there's two issues here. Even though normally we think about bright lights being really exciting, this is the puppy's bedtime. And we're going to include brightness here, but it, it also is really tricky if this puppy really should be resting at this point. So I'm gonna collect some verbs. I'm gonna collect some verbs that mean brightness. They're going to be regular verbs uh, and they're going to end in ED. I'm gonna think of lots of words that are to do with brightness ending in ed. And we are now going to play word collector. I want you to count how many of my words you can hear and remember. Are you ready? Illuminated, glimmered, reflected, bounced, glistened, flashed, gleamed, sparkled. What I want you to do with your friends now is chat. I want you to chat to each other and jot on your thinking side for learning chunk one, all of the words that could mean brightness. Off you go.
Okay, I'd like to hear all of your ideas and your teachers would love to collect them now with kind calling out. Your teacher has got a pen in their hand and they are going to listen to your ideas. But remember, what is your job? You are suggesting ideas and you're ticking off the ones you've got. If you haven't got gleamed, you can write it down. I'm going to speed you up now. I'm going to speed your teachers up too. I'm going to put 30 seconds on the clock for kind calling out. I'm going to share my ideas and I've organised them on a shadeometer. I've put in the less bright words at the bottom and the more intense bright words at the top. Have a look here. At the bottom in the less than department, I've got twinkled. Then I've got flickered. Then beamed and then dazzled. Oh, I do love dazzled. Right, we're moving to our last gathering of ideas. And this time we're going to work with only part of the process, okay? And what I want you to do now is this. Look closely at me thinking very much about the puppy's perspective. This is not a human perspective, it's much lower. It's down at the bottom of the pavement. Let's think about a city. Let's think about the curbs. Let's think about the cars and the gutters. Let's think about all the rubbish whirling around. And let's think about writing from this perspective. So that as the reader is reading it, they can feel almost what the puppy can feel and see. Mm. I've been thinking about tyres and I'm going to drop two negative adjectives before tyres uh, to create the atmosphere of negativity. I'm going to think about the car tyres and they'd definitely be wet and they'd definitely be filthy. I'm going to write down filthy. Um, let me choose this pen here. Filthy. Filthy. Dirty doesn't bring anything new into it, so I'm going to think about a different word, bring in a different lean. The filthy... Um, Wet's okay, rainy. I'm going, that's better. The filthy, rainy tyres. And then I'm going to put some movement in there. Um, spluttered. Yes, yeah, spluttered. I want you now to choose one of these ideas. All your own. You could choose rubbish. You could choose wrappers. You could choose cans. I want you now, by yourself, and you could talk to your friends though, on this part of thinking side, to think of two negative adjectives before your noun and a verb that would match. I'm gonna give you not long, 30 seconds, off you go. Okay, everybody, you are now going to see Mrs. C do some demonstration writing. You're going to see inside my brain. 
you're going to have a window to my mind and I'm going to show you how I'm going to lean on my word bank and all of my thinking ideas and push it into the writing. Now, watch closely. I am now moving to my writing side. First things first, you can have this simple sentence. It sets the scene quickly. It is provided for you. You can have that. You can write that down now if you want. I'm going to read it to you. It was a cold night, full stop. And I'm going to give you that sentence straight away to set the scene. We're going to add some more in here. Right. I want to use some of my adverbs. I could use an LY adverb like hopelessly, or I can use my little phrase, my fur to the pavement phrase. I think I'm going to use this phrase, nose to the ground. It's up to you what you use. I'm then going to put a comma in and then I'm going to finish the sentence and say what the puppy is doing and you're going to do the same. You can finish it how you want as long as it tells plot point one. Nose to the ground. Um, he sniffed about. Nose to the ground. Oh, he searched for scraps. I like that. Full stop. Then I've got all of these bright words and I want to talk about how bright the city is. Um, I'm going to introduce the street lights. One word that, that's tricky. Uh, sometimes um, we split that up, but that's one word. Street lights, mm, glimmered. I want more than a glimmered. Mm, I want more intensity. Uh, street lights, dazzled illuminated. Oh, I like that. Street lights illuminated. Now be careful here because depending on your bright word you might have to think of some extra words. Uh, street lights illuminated the busy city. And now I'm thinking about puppy perspective. I could have tyres, I could have wrappers, I could have cans. Streetlights illuminated the busy city. I'm going to drop in a, an as there to add another clause in. As negative, as heavy negative adjective. Loud, feet, pounded past. Mrs C isn't going to give you long because you've got a rich reservoir of words now in your vocabulary vault to help you. I'm going to give you one minute on your writing side. It's your turn now. Off you go. Well done, everybody. Don't worry if you're just finishing off your sentence there. That's fine, because while you're finishing off, I want you now on your thinking side for learning chunk two to split it into three departments, just like that. When you split it into three departments, because we're going to collect three groups of words, I want you to put your pens and pencils down and 
I want you to show me your two hands. Well done. This right hand, I want you to sit on it. And this hand is going to be a puppy. I want you to place your puppy on the pavement. And as you place your puppy on the pavement, I want you to make four legs. I want you to make a face. I'm going to talk now about the puppy and you are going to make your puppy hand come to life. Are you ready? And so it was a dark night and puppy was trembling and puppy was quivering. It was really cold that night and puppy was very hungry. Rubbish whirled around his ears and the smell of the city was strong. Bright lights were making his eyes water. And tonight, as he sniffed the pavement and walked along and behind bins, desperately looking for food, he suddenly stopped. Now, release your other hand. Place it high. This hand represents the hand of a stranger. I'm going to talk the next part of the story and you're going to be the hand of the stranger. The puppy was overshadowed and slowly, very slowly indeed. There was a lowering, a lowering of a hand. Ooh thought the puppy, rigid with fear. What is this hand going to do? The hand was cautious and the puppy could feel it was friendly. The hand got closer and closer and as the humongous, helpful hand got near to the puppy, he sensed it was the hand of a friend. Okay, what I'd like you to do now is listen to Mrs C talk some instant reaction words. I want you to see if you can gather five of them. I want you to Hold your finger up like this and count them as you catch them. We're going to play word collector. Okay, are you ready? How many can you collect? Some of these are longer than words. Almost at once, at that very moment, suddenly, without warning, all of a sudden, I want you now with your friends, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to chat. In your first word bank space on thinking side two, I want you to write down some instant reaction words and phrases. I wonder if you can write down seven. Off you go. Oh, well done, everybody. You were really good at that. I'm going to read my four now and I want you to audit and add a bit like bingo. Have a look to see if you've got these. And if you haven't, don't worry, you can add them on. Almost at once, all of a sudden, next moment, at that very moment, mm, I'm going to also put in suddenly. Now, the key part of this section is alliteration. And we are going to now gather words with the same sounds. 
we need words that have the same sound as h in hand and p in palm. Because this means that we can really create some writing that's got some high connectivity. We need to think about adjectives with the same sounds and verbs. We're going to collect verbs ending with ing so that we all use the same sort of pattern. Um, and we also want the reader to know that the stranger is a positive friend. Mm. I'm thinking now about words I can use. I could think about the size of the hand. Mm. I could think about almost um, that the hand uh, emits some sort of emotion. If I think about emotion, I could have heartwarming hand. If I think about size, I could have humongous. Oh, that word always makes me giggle. But what about verbs? Hmm, that's a bit harder. Um, I'm going to say hovering. I want you now just to concentrate on hand. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to chat with your friends and think of adjectives and verbs that bring positivity. 30 seconds, off you go. Okay, well, I've got helpful hand hovering. I'm going to turn over to your teachers now and they are going to do some kind calling out. They've got 30 seconds. Let's hear the ideas in your room. Off you go. Oh, brilliant. Oh, I love your ideas. Mm, I want to share mine. You can add to your list. Helpful hand hovering. Honest. Mm, does begin with the same letter, but doesn't have the same sound because it's a silent letter. What a shame. Hefty hand works though. Okay, shall we have a go at palm? right palm in this part of your thinking side. Please listen to Mrs C now because I think I'm going to give you some ideas with word collective. Hmm. Patient, polite, powerful, puffy. It's not very nice to say that about someone's hand, is it? Uh, they're my ideas. Oh, the verbs. Hmm. Placing. What I want you to do now for 30 seconds is to chot. Come up with your ideas to put the same sounds at the beginning around the word palm. Off you go.
Mrs C is now moving to the writing side. I'm going to look at all of those ideas. I want those instant reaction adverbs and adverbial phrases just to create a little bit of pace here. I also want to drench it with words with the same sound. This is my idea now on the writing side. Watch closely because I want you to build something the same that starts with instant reaction and then has alliteration in it. Suddenly, the dog noticed a loving limb. Same sound. Mm. Loving limb putting, loving limb helping. It would be good if the verb had the same sound too. A loving limb lowering. Lowering a delicious, hot, oh, we don't want to burn the dog's mouth. Uh, lowering a warm, crinkle, cut, chip, full stop. I'm going to give you a minute now on your writing side. Can you use an instant reaction adverbial phrase or adverb? and then show me some same sounds at the beginnings of words. One minute, off you go. Well done everybody. I can feel you working so hard. And this is our first day together because the more we get used to each other, the slicker we will get. Now, we are on the third learning chunk and I want you to cut up your third learning chunk on the thinking side into two departments. Now, hmm. I want to kick in now some words. Words that are spoken by the helpful, kind stranger. And I want to feel in this dialogue that what he says confirms to us as the reader that he is a really nice guy. So I'm going to have a little think about that moment again and the moment when the chip is passed over. And this little moment here, the puppy is gonna hear some words and those words are coming from the man's mouth. So we've got to think about those words. And one of the things I think would be really interesting is if they included um, in the synonym family to mean small. The sort of thing I'm thinking about is if I think of the word small, it also makes me think of dinky. It also makes me think of tiny. It also makes me think of the word little in that synonym family. Now, I'm going to give you a challenge with your friends. And now, I'm going to give you one minute, a little bit longer to chat. I want you to talk to your friends 
and imagine the big bubble coming from the man's mouth. I'm going to challenge you to practice with your friends to include a word that might mean small. The sort of thing I'm thinking of is something like this. Oh, what a dinky little dog. Are you okay? You're going to have some great ideas. Your ideas will be better than mine. You are now chotting, talking and jotting and thinking about what the man is saying. Off you go. Oh, I knew you'd be good at that. Oh, I really did know you'd be good at that. In fact, I'm going to hand straight to your teacher. They're going to pick up a pen and I'm going to give them 30 seconds. 30 seconds of kind calling out so that you've got all of the ideas of all the kind things that that man could say. Off you go. Here are my two ideas for the dialogue of the man. I wanted it to feel informal. I wanted it to feel positive. I wanted to know the man was kind. My two ideas. Come here, little fella. Mm. Look, a dinky dog. I know you've got some really good ideas. We are now going to play word collector. I am going to talk adjectives to describe the man, but very specifically to describe the man's voice. I'm going to drop an emotion adjective and think about how he's talking. So, I'm going to talk eight positive feeling adjectives. You really need to listen up. If you listen up, when you chot, I think you'll be able to come up with 12 adjectives. I know, that's quite a challenge. Are you ready to listen? Remember, show me you're listening by counting how many words you've caught and remembered. Are you ready? Sympathetic, sensitive, compassionate, Thoughtful, kind, warm, tender, reassuring. They're my eight ideas. You've got 30 seconds now to chot and you are going to write your ideas down in the second half of your thinking side. Off you go.
these are the six adjectives that I've written down. They are positive and I think they're going to be really useful. I've written down compassionate. If you've not got it on your thinking side, you can take it. Reassuring, tender, cajoling, really encouraging, warm, sympathetic. I am now going to move to writing side and you need to watch carefully because we are going to be adding in some dialogue. When we drop in some dialogue here on writing side, I want you to notice where it starts. It starts on a new line. I'm going to use inverted commas to introduce the dialogue. I want it to feel casual but warm. Hey, 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 little chap. Oh, my synonym for little chap, little guy. Oh, hey, little guy. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Question. Question mark. The talking's finished, so I'm going to close the inverted commas. And now I'm going to use my feeling word for the voice. A sympathetic voice said. It's your turn now. It's your turn with dialogue. Make sure you start a new line. Use inverted commas and I'm going to give you exactly one minute so we can feel in your writing the positivity of the stranger. Off you go. Mrs C is going to read all of her writing side now. I'm going to read it back and you're going to listen. You also need to read your work back. You can make changes and edits. You can look at your spelling. Remember with spelling, always be a brave speller. Always be a brave best bet speller and never, ever, ever don't use a word because you can't spell it. Try your best. Here we go. It was a cold night. Nose to the ground, he searched for scraps. Street lights shone. Hmm, we had illuminated and that was better. Let's put that in. Street lights shone on the busy city as heavy, loud feet pounded past. Suddenly, the dog noticed a loving limb lowering a crinkle-cut chip. Hey, little guy, are you hungry? A sympathetic voice said. I can't wait to read plot point one of your writing. Your teachers are going to hand me in their three favourites, the three pieces that impress them. And then I'm going to be able to read them. I'm going to choose one for the celebration board and then another three for super sentence stacking. Your teacher knows how to handwork in using the hashtag Mrs C 
hashtag live lessons. What I wanted to say to you with my kindest, most sympathetic voice is when you work with Mrs C, she is very quickety snap. But don't worry, we're going to get quicker and slicker. So be gentle to yourselves too. Give yourselves a little hug because you need to be really proud of yourself trying something new. I'll read your writing later and I'm going to hand back now to your teacher who I am sure also cannot wait to discover the buzzing words on your page. Thank you everybody and I'll see you tomorrow at the same time, half past ten, my lovely live learners.